previously on 58 keys just let me show you okay uh iphone i need to send an email well um xm there you go that's an address and it's to a mr well let's say uh i don't actually have trouble spelling this word but let's pretend that i do mr biderbeck no wait is previously the right word when you're talking about youtube I want a word that means uh, there's already a 58 keys video about text expansion on iPhones and iPads. Also on 58 keys. Um, so there's a video about this text expansion lock on the iPhone and the iPad. Uh, it's a useful feature there, but ultimately it's a little limited. Now here, what we want to talk about is text expansion or text replacements. It's sometimes called on the Mac and that isn't limited at all. Uh, let me show you a quick example, okay? I regularly have to type out my postal address, uh, except I don't. I type XD, bam, there it is, typed for me. Uh, or th this will take more explaining later. Please just relish it for now, okay? Here's a sentence I might write in my self-destruct blog that goes out on Friday mornings. Um, I decide I want to change that reference there uh, to the Writers Guild into a link to the Writers Guild of Great Britain. I can select the words I want, cut them with Command X, and they're gone. Now, if I type X, href, wallop, the words are back with the href, the right HTML code, and the website link, all typed back into the right uh, situation, wrapped around the words in the document for me. You can go down some rabbit holes with this, which actually might be good if you already know all about text expansion. Well, join me anyway, because my rabbit hole might be different to yours. It might not be, but you know, it could be. Hello, I'm William Gallagher, and this is 58 Keys, which, as ever, as always, it is for writers like you and me who use and also who write on Macs and iPhones and iPads. Do subscribe because there's just so very much to talk about. So much to talk about and so much to write about that sometimes it's handy to have certain things just kind of written out for you. I, I actually, I like, I more than like typing, I love typing. I think through the keyboard, it's home for me. But if I have to type my email address one more time, then I will. Yeah, anyway, anything repetitive and simple like that can be done for you on your Mac right now, as it is, without adding or without buying anything extra. And then beyond that, there are things you can do that you do have to buy that do much more complicated stuff that can be really good for you. Let's do the simple one first. On your Mac, go to System Preferences, click on Keyboard, then click on that kind of text lozenge-like thing. And that just as on the iPhone, actually, here's a list of text expansion or text replacement as Apple calls them that I happen to have already set up, including, there it is, right there, XD for address. Now you can click to edit any of this, but let's make a new one. Click on the plus sign at bottom left. You're asked for two things. You're always asked for two things. It's always going to be two things. What is it that you want to type, the short phrase like XD? And what do you want that to be replaced by, the address? Uh, here, Apple calls this replace and with on the Mac. On the iPhone and the iPad, Apple calls the exact same thing, uh, shortcut and phrase. And there are other terms. Trigger and snippet is common as well. But forever, always the same thing. What do you want to type that will trigger this replacement or expansion? And what do you want it expanded into or replaced by? Hand on heart, though, I'm, I'm, I've been trying to think of what to do here. And all you see there, they're all the ones I actually use from this feature, so I'm a bit stuck. But OK, suppose that I can never spell onomatopoeia. I can write, say, XO, that'll do, in the replace field and onomatopoeia in the with box. But you can see an immediate problem. If I can never spell onomatopoeia, well, I've got to get it right here, because if I don't get it right here, I will misspell it forever and maybe not even notice. So you've got to get the spelling right. You've got to take the effort to get it absolutely right this time. And you can also see that XO could be a problem. For example, next time you're on a warship and it's your job to disseminate the orders of your... Yeah. So you have to take care with what your trigger phrase is as well. Uh, trigger phrase and what the result is. You have to be careful. 
it used to be quite common actually for people to begin their trigger thing with a semicolon so semicolon o uh, because no words begin with a semicolon and that was perfect until the iphone came around because the semicolon isn't on the front iphone keyboard you have to tap a button to get to it so now you tap yeah it was messy well actually if you never use any of this stuff on your iphone your ipad fine but once you set up anything in this apple text replacement feature on the mac it is immediately available to you across the mac uh, the iphone the ipad everything you've got and you can edit any of these on any of those devices uh create and delete them on any of these devices what you can't do with apple's feature is have any result that is long it's perhaps more than one sentence I mean, well you definitely you definitely can't have entire paragraphs separated out i worked with a woman once who's uh, the bane of her job was how she got a lot of emails from people in and she would have to answer pretty much the same four or five questions in maybe two or three slightly different ways over and over again during the day so i showed her this well actually i showed her a couple of the, the third party text expansion things the things that can go further than apples and from then on for about two weeks she could tap a button or so and either have most of the answer typed out for her and let her then just edit changes or actually even more she could do something like this so there's some text but it includes a drop down list just for us uh, choose from a drop down list and now click the whole of that answer including those dates it's typed out for me and it's something for her it was typed out for her uh that's the thing where in this example if i chose january to march from that drop down menu she or i we could have had entire extra paragraphs about keeping warm be automatically added and not seen under any other ones i know all of this saved time but you caught me saying it was two weeks because she then left for a different job which is kind of a different solution but you know it, it worked she's very happy that uh, to do these extra things though that i believe the best option is a service and an app called text expander uh, for it's a subscription service so from three from three dollars 33 per month you have these extra things across the mac and actually across the iphone and the ipad like i said though there are apple imposed limitations on the iphone and the ipad so much so that you could watch my 58 keys video but what you could do or you could just accept that couldn't you it's quicker just accept it text expander isn't worth buying for iphone and ipad but it's so worth buying for the mac and if you buy it for the mac you automatically get it for the iphone and the ipad so okay so uh for example when i start a certain type of document um i type the pre-built trigger phrase the, the phrase that comes with text expander d date and today's correct date is entered for me or actually t time for the time that involves text expander going off to look up the date and the time from the mac coming back so it's simple to do but it's already doing more than apple's own feature can and it can do entire paragraphs with formatting with images i mean i suppose it, it could do a book if you could possibly want it and um, more usefully it does this thing of taking something short that I type and it asks me questions about it or it can um tell you what let, let's do it let's set up a, a blackmail note okay I want to be able to type a blackmail note x bk so yeah that'll be the trigger for it fine now writing out the note here preparing it choosing first a fill-in field later we will be asked to type in the name of the person we're blackmailing but for now uh the default let's just say unsuspecting victim set a pop-up menu uh, with the kind of things that you and i frankly usually blackmail people about we're horrible people aren't we and an amount of money we're horrible but we're not greedy now run this and see what happens i'm prompted for the name of the victim yeah but also as i type it there it comes out later in the email where i've chosen to put it and when i choose what we've stolen plus the price for getting it back the note is then written out for me and you be guilty with me in full notice the um <clears throat> deliberate mistake yours sincerely is spelt wrong 
Yeah, absolutely intentional. Certainly important. If you spell something wrong here, you will spell it wrong on every single blackmail note you ever send. You'll look terrible for it. So yet again, yet as always, you have to be careful setting up this stuff. Text Expander has this thing where it boasts actually about um, how much time it has saved you in the last uh, month, for instance. Um, for me, it claims that it saved me about nine hours. Like hell. This is a guess based on some low average typing speed. I type quickly. Text Expander has not saved me 150 hours last year, like it claims, but it did speed things up. And it did mean much more than this. I could concentrate on writing what I want to write. I love and relish and adore typing, but I type to write and to think too. I don't write to type out the same things over and over again. Let Text Expander deal with the repetitive stuff. You and I, we've got writing to do. Let me go way the other way down the rabbit hole. Let me take that example of the HTML link being created and wrapped around some text because that isn't text expander. Uh, it's simple to describe, it's harder to do, and it involves a more specialist app, a totally separate app called Keyboard Maestro, which is a wonder of the Mac. Any chance you ever get to talk about Keyboard Maestro, you take it. And here's a chance. Let me take it. Right, so here is Keyboard Maestro. If you haven't ever looked at it before, I, it looks complicated, but if you have, it looks so familiar, so much like home. It's very similar to shortcuts, you know, if you've dabbled with that, but it's a bit more powerful. Um, just like with any kind of expansion or text replacement, yet again, there are two things here. It looks like more, but there are two. What do you want to type to make something happen? And what do you want to happen when you've typed it? So that first line right up there, the one beginning, triggered by any of the following. Um, you can actually start Keyboard Maestro uh, with all sorts of things, a menu button, a Stream Deck button press thing, all sorts of things. But this one, my example, it uses how uh, Keyboard Maestro can watch the keyboard for you when you've told it to. I've picked the letters X, H, R, E, F for this shortcut or macro as Keyboard Maestro calls it, because it begins with an X and because I happen to know that href is part of making the web link and surely, surely I will never type href in any sentence that isn't a link. So x href, fine, that works for me, that's my trigger. Type that anywhere on your Mac and Keyboard Maestro sees it. Uh, the app immediately deletes the, uh, is it a word? It deletes the x href bit and then it runs through the rest of all of this. And the end result is the phrase that I have selected and cut, pasted back with a web link and all the right HTML wrapped around it. But that's actually three things there, isn't it? Uh, I know it's two actions, but three bits of this. The HTML code, the link to the website I want, and the phrase I want turned into a link. Before I run this, I have to do this. I have to find the website, I've got to get the link. I copy the link, but then I highlight, you saw this, I highlight the phrase I want replaced, I cut that. Normally, if you cut or copy something, it goes on the clipboard, and it replaces what was already there. So this is how, you know, you can copy something from here and paste it there, but if you then copy from there and try to paste it here, you've lost the first thing you copied. You, you know that, we're used to that. Keyboard Maestro though, uh, it can take what was in the clipboard now and what was in it last. So all of this, all of these controls, all of these options is saying I've cut the phrase but I have previously copied the website link. Please put the two of them together. Hmm. Yeah, can't tell. You're, you're either looking at me like, yeah, yeah, or a bit like, mm. you have a good poker face. Forget how it's done. Just see the benefit. Yeah, you have to set this up, but once you have, that is it forever. And I must use this 40 times a week. Plus, once you've set up anything like this, you can take it and you can do something else, something very similar, such as this, without me getting a link for something. Here's a sentence I might have written with the word iPhone. Let me highlight that, cut it with Command X, and now I type X plug and watch. It's ultimately the same result. I still want a link wrapped around it, but in this case, it's a very specific type of link. It's formatted. Keyboard Maestro has gone off to find it for me, check that it works, brought it back. 
Cuba Maestro costs $36. I suspect I would pay $36 for something I use 40 times a week, so more than 2,000 times a year, something like that. But I looked up the price for you just a minute ago, and I actually laughed. I mean, I've, I've bought this. I should know, but I bought it so long ago that I forgot what the price was. And obviously I had to check to find out for you, but I was just unthinkingly assuming it was much, much more than $36 because of so much worth in there. You get Keyboard Maestro to do one thing, fine. But then you keep on finding more and more it can do. It is ridiculous how incredibly useful this app has been to me over the years. There's a 58 keys just barely scratching the surface. I'll put a link to that below. And it's a one-time $36. Amazing. Uh, one thing I want to tell you, um, my re do I tell you this? All right, my real email address, it's actually to XEM, does it? And I was filling out a passport film, a film form by hand. You know those little boxes you write in? Well, in the little boxes, I wrote the letters XEM. And for just one moment, as I lifted the pen, I could not understand why it didn't expand out to my email address. I think it's the time to shut up then. That's it for this edition, 58 Keys. Thanks for watching. Now take care of yourself, write more, you and me both, and I'll see you soon.